Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Jane Wyman in Aileen Hamilton's Home to Thanksgiving on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight, Thanksgiving night on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize a story by Aileen Hamilton with the title Home to Thanksgiving. And it's appropriate not only for this reason, but because Miss Hamilton, weaving history with her fiction, brings into the story two great American names forever associated in fame and tradition, Currier and Ives. These artists, whose prints are as popular today as they were a hundred years ago, gave a picture of early America, not only to Americans, but to the world. Their skill captured the flavor of American family life, and this flavor is never more alive than on the festival of Thanksgiving. In our starring role, we are happy to have that distinguished actress and a true Hallmark friend of ours, Jane Wyman. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Home to Thanksgiving. At Christmas, as on every memorable occasion, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards. Because just as for hundreds of years, the word Hallmark has been the distinguishing symbol of quality. So today, the Hallmark on the back of your greeting cards is your assurance of finest quality and perfect taste. It's a symbol of quality all who receive your cards will quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Aileen Hamilton's Home to Thanksgiving, starring Jane Wyman. My earliest childhood recollection is of a storm-swept winter night on Long Island Sound of angry flames rushing over the deck of a ship and of cold, relentless waves pounding me into insensibility in the endless waste of darkness. And then, over the never-to-be-forgotten echoes of that terrifying night, I can still hear the tearful pleading of a small child's voice. Don't leave me, Papa. Don't leave me in the water. And then another voice, unfamiliar but kindly, reassuring and comforting. Go to sleep, child. You're safe now. You're safe. Though 23 years have passed, I still look with frightened wonder at the now famous print, awful conflagration of the steamboat Lexington. I still breathe a prayer of thanksgiving for that brave fisherman who snatched me from the waves and laid me shivering and half alive in the warm arms of Nathaniel Currier. Much has happened since that night in the year 1840, but I'll always remember with pleasant joy that long trip from the wilds of Long Island to New York and my introduction to the cheerful old Currier house on McDougal Street and especially my first meeting with Lindsay. Lindsay, I want you to meet Miss Victoria March of Philadelphia. She's six years old, and she's going to stay with us a while. So I promise her that if she's a good girl, you'll amuse her, play games with her. But cousin Ned, why, why, she's a girl. What kind of games can she play? Oh, I'll play anything, Lindsay. Anything you like. Well, I'll take you up to the attic and show you my lithographic stones and crayons. They're just like the ones Cousin Nat has at the factory. You mean you draw pictures? Oh, I love to draw, too. Oh, Cousin Nat, I just know I'm going to love staying in your house. And I hope Papa and Mama don't come for me. Or at least until the day after tomorrow. But they didn't come the day after tomorrow, nor the day after that, or ever. In their stead came my Uncle Aben and Aunt Harriet, 
and I went to live with them on Old Mill Farm in Parsons Corner, Vermont. And each year for five happy years, Cousin Nat and Lindsay came to visit, always in time for Vermont's autumn holiday, Thanksgiving. And then in 1846, as I came running down the farmhouse steps to greet Cousin Nat and Lindsay, Welcome, Cousin Nat. Welcome home to Thanksgiving. Well, thank you, Vicky. Where's Lindsay, Cousin Nat? I'm sorry, dear, but I couldn't spare him this year. The Christmas work was piling up. He didn't want to come. He thinks he's grown up now. And I'm just a nuisance to him because I'm only 12. Wait five years, Vicky, And then we'll see whether he thinks you're a nuisance or not. <laughs> Wait five years, Cousin Nat had said. I think I would have waited an eternity. Five years. Finally, early in May in 1852, a letter came. A letter from Cousin Nat. And Harriet! And Harriet! Cousin Nat is giving a ball for Laura at the Astor House. It's their fifth wedding anniversary and he's invited me. He wants me to stay with them for a while. Come, come, my boy. You surely haven't forgotten Vicky. Vicky? Uh, no. I mean, uh, yes. But, but Vicky never looked like this. <laughs> Remember what I once told you, Vicky? I'll go tell Lura you're here. Well, you haven't changed much, Lindsay. Well, I... I, I can't say the same for you. You certainly have. I mean, Cousin Nat was certainly right. You've grown into a beauty, Miss Vicky. Oh, come, Lindsay Brown. Now that Cousin Nat's gone, you don't need to pretend you're glad to see me. I know why you didn't come to Parsons Corner all these years. Oh, no, Vicky. I mean, I... Oh, oh look here and now. <laughs> Lindsay, isn't this just too wonderful to be dancing to the great Professor Herman's Viennese Ensemble in the grand ballroom of the Astor House? It's almost like a dream, isn't it? Dream come true. Oh, Vicky, these last three days have been like, well, like paradise. Vicky, you must promise me that you won't dance with anyone else all evening. Oh, but I've already promised the next poker to Cousin Nat. <laughs> oh, well, Cousin Nat. <laughs> when are you going to present the anniversary print, Lindsay? Oh, uh, just before the refreshments are served. Uh, Vicky, I, I want to talk to you. Well, we've been... Lindsay, where are you taking me? Just out on this little balcony where there's the most wonderful view of the city. Oh, Lindsay. It, it takes your breath away. It's so big and so inspiring. Vicky, over a quarter of a million people live out there. Look, look to the north there, beyond where the lights stop. See around 70th Street? Well, I, I bought a little land there and... <laughs> well, what I'm trying to say is that... Well, I, I plan to build a little house there and... And, and Vicky, I... Lindsay. I, oh, Vicky, I, I know it's only been three days, but we've really known each other since you were six and I was 12. And that, that's... Uh, Twelve years. <laughs> yes. Yes, I... Oh, I've, I've asked myself again and again how this could be. Three days ago, you were nothing to me, and, well, now you're everything. Oh, Vicky, you know I love you. You must. You love me? Oh. Oh, Lindsay, dear. How long I've waited to hear you tell me that. Well, then it's all settled. We won't have a long engagement, dear. It's not more than a year or two. Oh, you're very sure of yourself, Lindsay Brown. Oh, Vicky, I'll, I'll make you so happy. I, I, I promise. And, well, now that we're engaged, may I... Uh, just once, Dolly. Well, I imagine that under the circumstances it would be perfectly proper. <laughs> So, <clears throat> Cousin Nat and Laura, to commemorate this happy anniversary, the entire office staff of N. Courier has gotten together and prepared this special print entitled 
The Road Winter. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you all. And I might add that the original sketch for this lithograph was made by Miss Victoria March from her remembrance of your courtship days in Parsons Corner. <laughs> well, Vicky Child, you've improved considerably since you and Lindsay used to draw together up in the attic. I'm afraid we'll have to put you to work at the factory. Cousin Matt, do you really mean it? Of course I mean it. You can lend Ross Duncan a helping hand. Oh, excuse He's, me, uh, sir. Just wish to express my congratulations. And may I say that... It is my firm belief that the print, The Road Winter, will be one of the most popular lithographs the firm of N. Courier will ever publish. Publish? What makes you think I would ever publish a gift which was meant for my wife and me alone? Mr. Courier, you are far too generous a man to hoard anything to yourself, much less a print with such obvious mass appeal. And now, if you'll excuse me. Well, of course. Lindsay, who is that fellow? Oh, he was in the office this afternoon to see me. And I had hoped that you'd like him well enough to hire him as a bookkeeper. Bookkeeper? That, on the other hand, he, he may be right. An uncommonly shrewd fellow. Good sense. Send the young man around to see me next week. What did you say his name was? Uh, Ives. James Merritt Ives. <laughs> I went to work for Cousin Nat at the factory on Spruce Street. And he assigned me to work with Ross Duncan. So, you're Victoria March, huh? Another of Courier's hacks, eh? <laughs> Though I must say you're a lot more attractive than the others around this place. Cousin Nat has informed me that you have a Hudson River canvas which he wishes me to help you finish. May I see it, please? <laughs> my dear Miss March, I don't carry my paintings around with me. And furthermore, an artist, unlike a hack, works only when the mood strikes him. And you're seldom in the mood, I understand. But you take money from Uncle Nat just the same. I uh, care nothing about his money. But I do care most intensely about my art and my career. Anyone who wants to succeed has to care. And I wouldn't let anything stand in the way. Not anything. I see. Then you have no intention of working on the Hudson River canvas today, Mr. Duncan? On the contrary, Miss March. I have every intention. Put on your bonnet. You're going to peak skill with me right now. You can sketch in the background for me while I do the figures in the foreground. Well, really, Mr. Duncan, I... Are you coming or aren't you? Well, all, all right. Excuse me while I get my... Oh, you won't need it. It's going to be a beautiful day. Come along. I tell you, Vicky, you and Duncan have hit on something new with your sketch, My First Love. Romantic valentines are just what the public seems to want. You must do more of them. Oh, we will, Cousin Nat. Mr. Duncan and I are going to sketch two lovers strolling down a lane of magnificent old elms up in Riverdale... It's to be called The Lover's Walk. Sounds fine. See that you get started on it tomorrow. Oh, it's charming. Those beautiful, beautiful old elms. The blue sky and the shadows on the lane. Oh, but I just can't. Somehow, I just can't seem to get it. What's the matter, Vicky? Don't you feel like painting? No. Vicky? Hmm? Would you miss me if I were to go away? What'd you think of me? Are you planning on leaving soon? I'm sailing for Europe day after tomorrow. Oh, I see. I have to. To study, to work seriously. I'm not the kind who can go on like this doing hack work for Courier. Someday I'm going to paint one or two pictures that people will really want to look at. A hundred... 200 years from now. But why Europe? Why? Well, you see, this is my chance, Vicky. And not even you can stop me. I? Why should I try to stop you? What you do is certainly no concern of mine. Isn't it, Vicky? Isn't it? Please, Ross. Why are you afraid? You love me, Vicky. Love me as completely as I love you. Oh, no. You forget that I'm going to marry Lindsay. If I asked you to, you'd give him up. No, no, please. Ross, we'd better go. Please. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. Go on back to your sketching. When you can't live another moment away from my arms, you'll come to me. Until then, I can wait, Vicky. I can wait. <laughs> Yeah.
In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Home to Thanksgiving, starring Jane Wyman. Home to Thanksgiving. How beautifully Courier and Ives have helped us visualize America as it was when they were making their famous prints. Each one we look at seems to help satisfy that yearning for home we all get around the holidays. If you would like to send Courier and Ives prints to your friends this Christmas, you'll find authentic reproductions in the Hallmark Christmas card collection. There's another artist in the Hallmark Gallery Artist series you should see, for she has that same ability to take us back to other Christmases in other years. It's Grandma Moses. As you probably know, Grandma Moses first started painting about 14 years ago when she was 76. Since then, her paintings have become famous, mostly because they recapture the tranquil days around the turn of the century. You see the mist rolling in over the familiar hills, can almost smell the tang of wood smoke cutting the crisp air. And know at once that the sturdy New Englanders depicted are part of the heritage we're thankful for today. In addition to Christmas cards of Courier and Ives and Grandma Moses, you'll see many familiar and famous names represented in the Hallmark Christmas card collection. There's Winston Churchill, Norman Rockwell, Peter Hurd, Alex Ross, Edgar Guest, and many others. By all means, see the Hallmark collection tomorrow. There's still time to have your name imprinted on the design you select. And remember, there's a special welcome for the Christmas card with the Hallmark on the back, for it says you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Home to Thanksgiving, starring Jane Wyman. How easy it is in a moment of youthful impetuousness to cast aside the promise of a lifetime of happiness. Vicky was only 18 then, and Ross Duncan seemed to hold her in a spell. Cousin Nat, his warm heart was taking such delight in the love he'd predicted for Lindsay and me. And poor Lindsay. How could I ever have hurt them as I did? Vicky, Vicky, dearest, I have wonderful news for you. Cousin Nat has given me a new contract, a raise in salary immediately to $20 a week. So that you two children can get married right away. Right away? Oh, but... Oh, come, my dearest, come. Don't, don't let's keep Cousin Nat in suspense. Let's set the date right here and now. Don't rush it, boy. Give her time to order all the pretty things a girl wants when she gets married. Say, three weeks from today. How's that, Vicky, child? Oh, no. How can I tell you, Lindsay? Cousin Nat, please forgive me, but I can't. I just can't. I don't know what may be, but I had to come. Oh, Ross. You love me, Vicky. Oh, yes, yes, I love you. Oh, Vicky, my own, my own. Oh, darling. How can you ever love me after what I've done to Lindsay? I do. That's all I know, my darling. Oh, Ross. Ross, you won't leave me now, will you? You won't go to Europe. Oh, Vicky, it's it's only for a year or so. It's my chance. Don't you see? It's my chance to do something really fine. To make make you proud of your love for me. Well, then take me with you. I'll go anywhere to be near you. No, darling, it's no good. I need freedom, space, time. I've I've been hedged in by Courier. Now, I won't be hedged Ross. in by... Ross. Oh, Vicky, surely you can see. Hedged in? By me, Ross? Why, I thought I would be a help to you once we were married. I, I thought you and Vicky, I... Vicky, could... don't you understand? It would only destroy our love. Put shackles on it. We'd be living in a, a false paradise, deluded by a false joy. It, it could bring you nothing but unhappiness. I see. I'm sorry I came here, Ross. I think I'd better go now. Vicky, don't don't leave me like this. Goodbye, Ross. Vicky. Oh, cousin Matt, I'll never see him again. Vicky, this is for the best, believe me. Marriage with a man like Ross Duncan would only result in misery. He's unreliable, brutally selfish, Vicky. But I love him, Cousin Nat. You only think so now. You're a young child. Time will take care of everything. Go back to Parsons Corner, child. Go home to Vermont, and soon, very soon, happiness will follow. When the 
train left for Parsons Corner the next morning, I was on it, feeling hopelessly alone and defeated. Cousin Nap was right, for Lindsay was soon to follow. And the next year, on Vermont's Thanksgiving Day, we were married at Old Mill Farm. But the shadow cast by Ross Duncan hung over our happiness until in the 10th year of our marriage. Vicki, I saw Ross Duncan today. Ross? Yes. Does that surprise you? Well, after all this time, Lindsay, he's a stranger to me. Is he? Is he, Vicki? Oh, Lindsay, please forget the past. Have you forgotten it? Have you never had doubts? I... Yes. Yes, I have, but never for myself. Only when I've seen uncertainty in your eyes, Lindsay. Only then have I known what torture was in your heart. Then, for my sake, for the sake of our little daughter, Natalie, and for the sake of our future together, once and for all time, the light of day must be shed on this doubt. Vicki, I want you to see Ross Duncan once more. See Ross? Yes. You must, Vicki, you must. Don't you see it's the only thing that'll save us, that'll prove now and forever that we are secure? Vicky, Vicky, my dearest, am I talking like a fool? No, Lindsay. No. I will go. I will see Ross. But believe me, it will have no effect on my heart. Vicky, you've come. Yes, Ross. Oh, then you still love me. Oh, Vicky, it's been ten years. How have I born ten years? Aren't you being a little dramatic, Ross? That's all over and done with. Not for me, Vicky. I've never forgotten you. Please, darling, I've missed you. I've missed you so desperately. No, Ross. But I would like to hear about your work and whether you've accomplished all you hoped for. Oh? I've, I've never gotten around to painting those two or three works that were to live after me. So I've decided to give it up. Give up painting? Is that what made you finally come home? Oh, I came home to fight for the Union. I'm proud of you for that, Ross. Oh, Vicki, you still love me, admit it. No. No, I... Darling, don't be afraid. I won't leave you again. We've lost ten years, but we're not going to lose another day. But I thought you came home to fight. Not to run away with me. Oh. Well, first, I, I do have to go to Washington to arrange for my commission. I, I intend to hold out for a captaincy at least, and that'll take a little time, but... I don't care how long it takes, so long as we're together every second of it. You're as sure of yourself as ever, aren't you? But this time you're wrong. And how right Cousin Matt was. There's no kindness in you. No feeling for others. You know only what you want, and you reach out for it with ruthless hands. I'm free of you, Ross. Completely free. Vicky, listen. Oh, it's no use, Ross. I'm out of your reach. Forever. <laughs> Vicky, Oh, Vicky, my dearest. Can you ever forgive me for putting you in such torture? Oh, he's vile, Lindsay. Loathsome and selfish. But I'm glad you made me see him. We're free, darling. Completely free of any doubt. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear it. Well, Cousin Nat. Though I can't say that I ever had any particular doubts myself. And I have great news, children. Mark this date well. Mark it well. October 3rd, 1863. Today, President Lincoln has proclaimed the last Thursday in November to be a national holiday of Thanksgiving. Well, that is great news. What a great good man the president must be to ask the nation to give thanks to the Almighty, while his own heart bleeds more than any other. Yes, the war news is not too comforting. But you almost made me forget the real reason of my visit. Have a look at this. Why, Cousin Matt, what is it? I was going to keep it as a surprise to you on your 10th wedding anniversary this Thanksgiving, but now I would like your permission to issue a print of it, commemorating the first National Thanksgiving Day holiday. Our permission? But why should you... Why, Lindsay, that's Old Mill Farm. So it is. 
And, and oh. there's Uncle Avon on the porch, greeting. It's you, Lindsay. And there you are, too, Vicky. And Aunt Harriet. <laughs> oh, in the doorway with little Natalie in her arms. Oh, cousin Nat. I had George Drury do it just for you. But he's done it so well that I'm sure if Mr. Ives were here, instead of in the army fighting for the Union, he'd say to you, you are much too generous to hoard anything so fine to yourselves. This belongs to America. Oh, it does, cousin Nat. Indeed it does. It's what America is, what it will always be. A land of happy homes and happy families with their roots deep in the soil and their hearts ever grateful to God for the bounty he bestows, even in these troubled times. If only this print will help all who see it to remember that, Vicky. Courier and I will have done a real service. Oh, they'll remember, Cousin Matt. For who can look at it and not hear again and again the ever-cheerful words, Welcome, Welcome home to Thanksgiving. Jane Wyman and James Hilton will return in a moment. Today, on Thanksgiving Day, we as a nation acknowledge our supreme dependence on Almighty God. Perhaps this year, more than ever, we should reaffirm in our minds and hearts, as well as to the rest of the world, that our democracy rests on the truth that all men are created by God and have the same dignity and value in His eyes. So on this Thanksgiving Day, I hope you'll join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Our Father, creator of all, our humble thanks we bring for ripening fields and golden sun, for trees and stars and rain, for home and friends and a country free, but most of all, for thee. Thank you, Frank Goss. That was nourishing to the heart. And so also, Jane Wyman, was your performance on our special Thanksgiving Day program. Well, it was wonderful to be here and share this holiday with you, Mr. Hilton. And I, too, thought the Thanksgiving message was most inspiring. I'd love to have a copy of it. May I, please? We'll see that you get it, Jane. And now, from all of us at Hallmark Playhouse, from the makers of Hallmark Cards, from Bill Gay, our director-producer, Lynn Murray, our music director, Axel Grunberg, who adapted tonight's story, Frank Goss, our announcer, Jane Wyman, and from me, James Hilton... Our sincere greetings to all of you at home on this day of Thanksgiving. May I invite you to hear us next week when we present Irvin Anthony's Decatur, the inspiring story of one of America's great naval heroes. And for the role of Stephen Decatur, we shall be proud to welcome one of Hollywood's finest young actors, Richard Widmark. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Jane Wyman can currently be seen in the Warner Brothers production, The Glass Menagerie. The part of Lindsay was played by Tony Barrett, Ross Duncan by Lamont Johnson. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time when James Hilton returns to present Richard Widmark in Irvin Anthony's Decatur. And the week following, O. Henry's The Third Ingredient, starring Anne Blight. And the week after that, Mildred Cram's The Promise on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.